This is Zach Arcuri with 14 North. You're listening to the Bree Delicious Podcast. And fuck Carol Baskin. Hey. Hey, Zach. I tell him you fucked up on the time schedule and we called him late. Hey, Zach, you know he's lying, right? <laughs> he, 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 I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to interview you guys. And we get on, we get on the, we get on the line and we have Swedish accents. And I'm like, there's no way these fucking people are from Florida. <laughs> like, hey, you never know. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Sometimes no, you do no, when we're, Bruce we're, is running the controls. <laughs> yeah, we're not from Sweden. Yeah. No, no, and I'm all over the place today, so I apologize, but thanks for being patient. No, all good, man. No worries. So if you were going to give uh, the boardroom pitch, if somebody who doesn't know anything about 14 North, can you give us a two-sentence boardroom pitch? Um, yeah, 14 North is a, uh, I guess you could say we're kind of like a hard rock band from, uh, from Jacksonville Beach, Florida. Um, started up in about 2016 and the uh, the project actually actually started in my garage on 14th avenue north in jacksonville beach so that's kind of how we got our name and uh ventured into the studio of damon starkey and, and started recording and probably probably around 2017 and we're just now getting our uh our first album out there to you guys awesome that was a beautiful two Two sentence pitch. I liked it. So that gets the point across when you guys are, how are you guys dealing with this quarantine? I mean, obviously everybody is, uh, you know, on lockdown. So you're not getting, you able to get out there and play. Are you doing anything different to keep in contact with your fans? Um, you know, we're just, we're just trying to really utilize social media right now. Um, that's really the, uh, really the only thing you can do. And, uh, it's just super weird times, man. It's, the vibe outside is, is just off. Everything feels weird. Um, you know, I haven't, I haven't even seen the rest of the guys in the band. Everyone else is, you know, staying inside and, and distancing themselves and, uh, just really right. weird times, man. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I've never seen anything like this and Bru <laughs> Bruce is almost a yeah. hundred. He hasn't either. So that's right. I'm yeah. close to a hundred. <laughs> so you must have been a baby the last time this happened. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Right. I was just, uh, just a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> um when you guys are are you taking advantage of this downtime to do any writing um you know i'm always writing so yeah i've i've got a lot of time on my hands right now i'm i'm sitting on the couch with a guitar next to me and uh when i'm when i'm sitting at home i don't really like to watch tv during the day or anything so if I'm not messing around outside, I'm, I've got the guitar in my hand. And I know the rest of the guys are kind of like that, too. But like I said, I haven't even seen them. And, you know, we're distancing. And, um, but yeah, I've uh, come up with some pretty cool stuff. At least I think it's kind of cool. cool. <laughs> it's always up to the other band members, right? You're like, I got this great yeah. song. And they're like, that's terrible. <laughs> that kind of sucks. Yeah. <laughs> that's really good. How about if we completely rewrite it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what if we changed everything? Yeah. Do you um when you guys are writing, are you guys like in a in a real world without a quarantine? Are you writing like everybody in the same room together and bouncing things off each other? Or are you guys emailing riffs and taking advantage of technology? Yeah, we, we definitely take advantage of technology. Um a lot of a lot of the a lot of how we wrote the first album was uh I uh you know, I'd come up with a guitar riff or somebody else would come up with a guitar riff, send it to each other. And, um, I'd record it in my home studio and we'd just kind of demo it. And, you know, once I got something together, I would, uh, you know, call the guys over and be like, all right, let's, you know, let's collaborate on this and, and kind of each of us put our own touch on it. So yeah, it's all, we all co-write together and, um, that's that's basically our writing process. Yeah, we definitely we definitely utilize the email and and voice memos and you know little recordings and stuff like that on our phone and uh, kind of bounce ideas off each other. Right. Okay. Amazing time Chris? to be a musician. Um, you say home studio. What what DAW are you running? Uh, I use Reaper. Oh, cool. Cool. Um, yeah, have it's you super easy to use. Um, it's free. So that's yeah. nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. And you do all the, go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. 
Do you do all the mixing and producing yourself, or do you uh, have somebody else do that for you? Uh, I mean, I just do like basic mixing, um, just for like our, you know, demo purposes and and kind of like you know, uh, pre production kind of stuff before right. that before we actually go into a studio. Okay, cool. Uh, when you're writing, are you writing like the songs for the song's sake, or are you writing songs like how they would come about in a live setting? You know, like this part would be great live, or is that not even an issue? Um, I mean, sometimes uh, I, I don't really tend to focus on that. Sometimes I'll be like, all right, well, let's let's write something with with a, with a lot of energy. You know, something we can really get a crowd going with. But not really, uh, not really so much focused on like certain parts in a song that would be cool live. You know, we kind of we kind of just write how we feel and what you know what we like. Okay. And so I got one more on the writing and then I'll leave it to Chris. But when you, uh, when you're writing, is there a message or a something you want your fans to take away from after listening to a 14 North record or song? Um, yeah, definitely. There's uh there's definitely a, a strong message to our lyrics. Um, a lot of it, uh, a lot of the stuff we talk about, we talk about and touch on is, you know, struggling with, uh, with demons and, and things of that sort. So yeah, I definitely, uh, <clears throat> I definitely hope that somebody can take away or, or even relate to some of the stuff that we write about. Okay. Chris, what's your opinion on beaver whiskey? Beaver no, whiskey? no, no, no. Beaver booze, beaver booze. Oh, beaver booze. What's your opinion on beaver booze? Um, I've actually never heard of that. Um, <laughs> we oh. just learned about it. So, Swedish people that we just talked to, the uh, ye banished privateers out of Sweden, apparently it's whiskey that is soaked in the anal glands of a beaver. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, we thought they were lying and we looked it up. It's a real thing. I had to Google I, it because I still like I haven't drank in four years, but oh, okay. even, if I, even if I did, I would never try that. <laughs> oh, no. And I like whiskey. Whiskey, I, I liked whiskey a lot when I was drinking, but no, I, I don't think I'm interested in that. Yeah, the guy was tells it tastes like leather, a little bit of leather, and a little bit of musky. But I don't know. It, it's got to be like ass. That's fucked up. Yeah, that that <laughs> is fucked up. I couldn't agree more. Okay, so everyone that's ever been in a band knows that drummers are crazy. What's the craziest thing your drummer's ever done? <laughs> Uh, my drummer's pretty laid back, but, what? uh, the, gnar the gnarliest thing he's ever, the gnarliest thing Josh has ever done is we played a show, played a show in town one time and, uh, we got our, our sound check got super rushed and he didn't have time to set up his fan and it, the AC was out in this fucking venue oh, and, God. Uh, <laughs> at, the, <laughs> at the end of the show, he just blew chunks all over the stage. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> It was fucking rock and roll as hell. And uh, he just ran out of the venue and just like passed out in a, like an alleyway in the back. And uh, he made this like the sound guy had to clean it up and everything. It was great. It was that's awesome. Excellent. So the yeah, AC, that's what he gets for rushing our sound check. The AC is out in a Florida bar and there's no fan for the drummer. <laughs> yeah. And, and it was it was midsummer, too. It, oh, it was my hot. God. And that's excellent. I, how how yeah. would anyone even go into a bar midsummer Florida heat like without AC? That's insane. It was rough for <laughs> sure. <laughs> there nice. was there was no social distancing there. Everyone's sweat was all over everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, there 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 was sweat flying all over the place. Um, yeah, drummer had to go to the hospital. It was awesome. Oh my god. Oh, okay. So fully like dehydrated kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. It was super wow. dehydrated and yeah. Okay. But he killed the show. We killed the show. It was great. Do bass players matter? Get, uh, bass players do not matter. <laughs> <laughs> so that's funny no, that Chris just, asked yeah, that. I'm just, I'm it's just funny kidding. that Chris they asked do. that because he told uh, the last, we talked to a bass player a couple weeks ago from one of the bands. You said he was the most popular person in the band than a chick magnet. Really? Yeah, so don't listen to what Chris says, really. Who was I to, who are we talking to? Been really ugly. Who we're talking we? to Zach. No, I, no. I play lead guitar. Bruce, who were we talking to when I said that? 
Zach, he had no idea who he was talking to with you either, so thanks for letting him know. <laughs> <laughs> He's all screwed up with the schedule today. But I don't remember what band that was, to be honest with you. Ah, well, um, there the you rest go. of the band must have been really ugly. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. You're getting a lot of hate mail here. Do bass players matter? <laughs> who asks a question like that? <laughs> I don't know. But here, so I've got it's, a- it's funny. It's like a funny thing to just bash on the bass player. But our bass player is great. And he's also very handsome. So, oh. <laughs> All right. So we've been uh, we've been in a weird kind of mood, trying to keep it light with all this crap going on in the. Uh, in the world. So we've got a couple of ridiculous questions before we uh, call it a day. If you're game. Yeah, for sure. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Uh, man, I don't think anybody's ever fucking asked me that. <laughs> I would say so. It's yeah, a, I mean, that's what I'm saying, right? It's meat in between a bun. So, I mean, sounds like it sounds like a sandwich, doesn't it? I think it is, but most people argue that it's not. I th- I'm gonna go with yes. I'm gonna say a hot dog is a sandwich. Nice. Is uh is soup? I mean, is cereal a soup? Ah, uh, where do you get these from? Oh, I can't tell you. I have to kill you. <laughs> I'm. I don't think so. I'm not. I don't. I don't think that's a soup. See, I would say it has to be right because. Oh, hey, there's my phone again. I would say it has to be because what's the difference? Soup is just a liquid with stuff in it, right? Yeah, I guess so. And you can have cold soup. You can have like borscht or gazpacho or anything like that, right? So it's a low fat yeah. cream soup? Is that it could be a low fat cream <laughs> soup. Yes. <laughs> Next time I want cereal, I'm gonna ask my girl to bring me a cereal soup. There you go. Oh yeah. And uh, and lastly, how would you describe the color yellow to somebody who's colorblind? Uh bright. <laughs> <laughs> I mean color I mean colorblind people can still see like brightness, right? I would think they could see shades, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. So I mean bright and uh fuck, I don't know. All right, so last one. I know I said last one before, but here's one more for you. Yeah. Where are you with pi- where are you with pineapple on pizza? I love it. Hey, no, man, no, yes. No, yes, no, yes. No. yes. Yes. Uh, I, I am not, I'm end this I'm not picky when it comes to anything like that. No, 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 no. <laughs> Bruce, right. good being such a where are stuff. you? Where are you on Gojira? Gojira? Eh, no. Oh, oh God. What's the tiebreaker? Wait, what do we have for a tiebreaker? Well, tool. What do you, are you mean? On the new tool record. I don't like tool. Oh. Yes. Yeah, Zach, you're, back, you're back in my good graces, Zach. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I have saw, a question. I saw Tool last summer, and it was it was kind of cool to see him live, but no, but I'm was, not a fan. It was very unclimactic, right? Oh, super fucking boring. Yeah, it was like I, watching paint dry. Ah, thank you. Interesting. I'm not a big Tool fan either. Al- yeah, although I, I'm supposed fair. to go see Deftones and Gojira in August, but I don't think that's going to happen. I don't, no, ah, no. man, I was supposed to go see them too. Oh God, I would love to go. I hope I hope it still happens. Okay, I got a question for you. If a band sells socks as merch, should they sell them one at a time or as a pair? Oh Jesus Christ. Um, I mean, it'd probably probably be more profitable to sell them one at a time, but <laughs> I would I would definitely hook them up with a pair. <laughs> Zach, I'm sorry this has totally gone down the dumper, and it's probably unlike any interview you've done. I'm sitting here at home, bored out of my mind. This is great. Let's keep going. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just have, I have one more for you, and then we got to get on to the next one. But let me uh, go ahead. If you want to go, Chris, and then No, I'll I'm good. I'm good. So we've had other bands do this today, and I'm just going to hit you with it, and maybe you're game or not. What's your favorite animal, and can you make the sound that it makes? <laughs> <laughs> Shit! I don't even know how to begin to make a tiger noise. Oh, oh you're into you the Tiger King. Now. He's from now Florida. Gotta, He's yeah. a Tiger King guy. Yeah, fuck I'm, Carol Baskin. I'm fuck, I, yeah, Carol, fuck Baskin. Carol Baskin. And and just for the record, I'm from I'm not from the Carol Baskin part of Florida. I'm from the Tim Tebow, Tom Petty, uh, yeah. the good part. You know, <laughs> fuck Carol Baskin. Fuck. 
Okay. All right, so let's hear the tiger. You got to at least give it to us now. We can't leave us hanging. <laughs> yes, you heard it here. <laughs> that was weak. All right, let's do it again. My dog's freaking out. Uh, deep, deep, give us a good one. <laughs> yes. Okay, I got one last one before we go. Since you're in Florida, why I'm I'm kind of new to the U.S. I've only lived here for about two years. I'm originally from Canada. Why does Florida have such a bad name? Because we're fucking crazy. <laughs> there you go. Hey, we're like you- uh, we're like the zoo of the United States. I see. I see. I love it. I claim it. <laughs> Hey, man, sorry about the delay, but thank you for doing this. I hope it wasn't too bad. Yeah, for sure. That was fun, guys. Yeah, we try and keep it light and fun. All right, be well, man. Stay safe, and we'll talk to you soon. Appreciate it, guys. Have a good one. You too. Bye. Bye